When you told me you loved the symphony, I felt my heart beat in pizzicato. We were dancing across vibrating strings, caked with the rosin of the universe, passing knowledge like secret dances by moonlight. Come, dance with me. Let me conduct a symphony just for you. I'll record it in sunsets and starlight so that you can always find your way home. I've been conducting symphonies my entire life, hoping that you will hear them and come to investigate, come to see the beauty that is sound flowing from my hands into the vast ether, flailing about as though signaling tenacity to the gods. Sometimes I flail, and by, by sometimes I mean all the time. Sometimes I flail and my fingertips kiss your favorite wine glass. You didn't know it was your favorite until you watched it falling from the counter. That's the way it's final moments in one last burst of passion before crashing into the floor like a cymbal. Smashing into the pieces of my shame that are impossible to pick up. My symphonies only end in chaos. My symphonies only end in the reality that I cannot be trusted. I am an unrelenting force that leaves destruction in its wake. I am a disappointment that cannot go unpunished. I am a problem. But as we were picking up the pieces, placing them carefully into a box where our memories will forget, I said I was sorry. And you, you told me this was your favorite symphony yet. It was just glass. And I am just skin and bones and love and flailing chaos. Come, flail with me. Maybe we can write a symphony together. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Oh, that's not good. Uh, welcome to my talk, uh, Code, Cerebral Palsy, and Compassion, and obviously a lot of poetry. Um, so, in this talk, I will be telling you a little bit about myself, obviously sharing some intimate poetry I've written over the years about my disability. That was a piece I wrote a couple of years ago, I broke a a wine glass at a friend's house, which is something that happens very often, and you know, just wanted to capture that in in a poem. Um, so yeah, I, I um I read that to my friends recently, and one of my good friends looked at me and he said, "You know, you're not a problem. Like you know, we got you. Um, you know, we're happy to have you in our lives." And that's kind of the, you know, the point of this talk is that, you know, the people that you surround yourself with, um, and your, you know, your journey matters, and people got you. <laughs> so, I have a disability called cerebral palsy. I love that they make it really hard for people with CP to say. Um, really nice of them. So, CP is usually a birth injury, it's something that happens early in childhood, um, and essentially damage to the brain, it can get caused by a few different things, so, um, stroke, you know, loss of blood to the brain, um, infections, uh, trauma, so, like, loss of oxygen, that kind of thing, um, and just general, like, malinformations, uh, yeah, cause you me, um, so essentially, you know, damage to the brain somewhere. Uh, we'll talk about the different areas, but uh, CP, it's like a, an acute injury. So, you know, it happens, it doesn't progress over time. It's just a result of this one-time trauma um, that happened. And you'll hear about how that happened to me later. Um, so at the bottom here, it says, you know, doesn't worsen over time. You're like, yeah, that's true, but... I think that it will definitely wear on my body over time. So, 
doesn't get, you know, theoretically worse, but <laughs> life might get a little worse. <laughs> so, different kinds of CP um, associated with different parts of the brain. So, uh, spasticity, which is different than spasms. So, spasticity is like muscle tightness, so like bending over, trying to touch my nose. Never been able to do that. It's a good time. Uh, I tried to do yoga to help with that. Uh, uncontrollable movement, so flailing <laughs> spasms um, associated with the basal ganglia, and then cerebellum, you know, poor balance uh, associated with uh, that part of the brain. Most of the time, you'll see um, injury to multiple areas of the brain. So, um, you know, as is my case, I have uh, a combination of these different, you know, factors, um, you know, a little bit of everything. And with CP, you could have, it'll affect different parts of your body. So something I never really thought about until recently is that your brain actually has like two separate blood streams, you know, for the different hemispheres. So as a result, you can have injuries to one side of the body or another. So in my case, uh, my CP is mostly on my right side, a little bit on my left side, but, um, you know, more so to my right. So, like, fine motor control is something that I have trouble with. Uh, I think I had this here. So uh, my specific cerebral palsy um, is uh, very mild. So... I've known a lot of people in my life with disabilities, just, you know, kind of like we're all here naturally in the Drupal world. You know, I, I naturally meet people in the disability world through different organizations. They're just putting myself in the room where, you know, people want to hang out and help. Um, so my CP is very mild. I know people that uh, are in wheelchairs, unable to talk, that are still very beautiful people able to sh share their story. Um, I know, you know, professional golfers with CP that play, there's like a whole disability circuit. There's like a professional ranking for golfers with disabilities. I am a world rank golfer. <laughs> I'm very last, but you know, I'm still there. It still counts. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I you know. Lots of, lots of very beautiful people in the world with CP. Um, I don't know if you guys ever saw Josh Blue um, was on, like, Last Comic Standing. And one of it, like, I have, a, I have a lot of jokes of his that are my favorite. But one of my favorites is, like, you know, they asked me if I got nervous when I came on stage and talked in front of people. And I said, heck no, I got this many people staring at me every day. So, a lot of really cool people, um, and we love to make fun of our disability, so feel free to do the same. Um, I have issues with balance and coordination, so I'm pretty good, you know, like I said, super mild, like, I can walk, um, you know, just balance has always been a challenge for me, so lots of, lots of tripping and falling, um, lots of just trying to navigate, you know, narrow, narrow passageways, so, like, when I'm in a big crowd, I try to stay out of big crowds so I don't get pushed around too much. So like when I go to a concert venue, you know, I'm, I'm sticking away from where people <laughs> won't mess with me. Unfortunately, there's a lot of places where, where that is the thing. Um, I also have stiffness, obviously. So um, lots of not being able to bend over, um, you know, just general like soreness in my muscles tightness basically my muscles are constantly under contraction um so yeah spasticity stiffness i i do a lot of therapy to to you know work through that and just continue to take care of myself um and i will talk about how you know that journey has been very important to me as well obviously i flail <laughs> i really i love that poem just like the, the word flail, I think, is such a great, like, 
beautiful, poetic way to describe what I do. <laughs> Any of the people around me that, that know it, um, know that it, it comes with the territory. So, uh, all this adding up, don't, don't give me a shot in a shot glass, because I will <laughs> spill it instantly. And yeah, we're somewhere right side. Still affects our left side a little bit. Um, but I think it's very interesting because I, I golf and I play, like, I bat right-handed, but I do everything with my left hand because I think, you know, that fine motor control, I'm just not able to, like, you know, control the spasms in my right hand as much as I can in my left. So, you know, typing is, is a nice challenge. Um, I had someone in college one time tell me that the way I typed, it looked like I was just waving my hands over the keyboard and magic was coming out. <laughs> Which I think is a pretty good description. Like, that's pretty much how it works for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah. So, all the therapy. Um, so, uh, therapy has been a very important part of my life. And I've gone to therapy my entire life. What do I mean by therapy? I mean all the therapy. So, um, physical therapy is something I've done, you know, throughout my entire life. Again, like a lot of what you'll see with cerebral palsy is the focus on, on childhood because it's really childhood intervention that like makes me possible to stand up here today. You know, the help I received through, through physical therapy and all these different services um, were really important to me. So I still try to go to physical therapy. I actually uh, got fired by my physical therapist recently. Uh, he said, so I, you know, I've been going to the gym a lot. He's like, you're taking care of yourself. You don't need my help. I was like, yes, I'm not disabled anymore. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, physical therapy's been great. Um, occupational therapy, so the difference between PT and OT is OT is more focused on um, navigating everyday life tasks. So, so things like handwriting, things like typing, um, more of like the, the day-to-day -day skills that I use and, and navigate, you know, my challenge. I remember uh, when I was in grade school, they tried to get me to type normally, like with the, what the hell do you normally type? I don't know. Um, and yeah, I wasn't having it, got very frustrated and uh, eventually learned how to type through waving magic. <laughs> <laughs> so, OT is a great, um, speech therapy was a big one for me. So, obviously now I'm a poet, I can talk so clearly, oh so clearly. Um, you know, I went to a lot of speech therapy as a kid, so I was, for, you know, fortunate, privileged enough to be in a school where they offered these services, so I'd get taken out of class, they would take me to, you know, a, a speech therapist and we would just work on pronunciation and talking and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it all really mattered. It did such a good job. And then my favorite kind of therapy is therapy, therapy, counseling. I think talking to a therapist, you know, really throughout my whole life has been probably one of the most important keys to my success is like something now like the, the honesty and and arriving at therapy in a place where like I'm looking to to take care of myself and heal has been really powerful for me um so I highly recommend therapy what can I say um about it? I'm sure I'll talk more about it um but yeah it's just having a place to to work on yourself and to give yourself love, I think is so important. So, you know, throughout my life, all different types of therapy have been really amazing for me. And I've always had this, you know, thought in my mind. And I, I think you can kind of see how my, how my poems start to form is I have this, like, thought in my mind. But this has been one that has stuck with me my whole life is that, like, there's no manual on disability. So, you know, 
I'm, I've always wanted someone to tell me what I should be doing to take care of myself. You know, I've always wanted a doctor to let me know what I needed. And, um, you know, I, I, think, I think a lot of us do that. You know, we look, we look to others to, to validate. We look to others to know what is right and wrong. But I spent a lot of my life looking for the manual, you know, looking for how do I be disabled? Like, how do I deal with this? And there wasn't one. And, you know, this is where therapy is really important, right? It's like, I, I need to trust, learn to trust that I'm doing what I need to do to take care of myself. And, you know, therapy is a very important part of that. Very important part of navigating, navigating all this. Uh, of course. So, <laughs> that's, that's me. I, I had a really cool, actually, I have that really cool. Oh. Oh. Hi, I'm disabled. I can't <laughs> shit. Oh, no, I did not just break this. I just broke this. Well, yeah, fuck, I guess I could do another phone then, huh? Because I was about to do one anyway. Um, my apologies. Uh, should've, should've seen that coming. But, again, man, this is, like, this is part of, part of that experience, right? And I think for a lot of my life, I really did beat myself up about it. And, you know, I still do, right? Like, I still, I don't think it's something that I will ever stop doing. But what I can do is control how I navigate that and control how I give myself the love and care I need to, to move through it. So, um, I was talking about, so, uh, when I was in high school, I was on the poetry team, and this is only for, like, one year of high school, this is uh, obviously where, uh, my poetry world started, um, but, uh, so, in Ch I was in Chicago, the Chicago Public School System has this really cool program called Louder Than a Bomb. And it was founded by this amazing poet, Kevin Koval. Um, and essentially they have all the schools from the city of Chicago send like a poetry team. Like they would like a basketball team or a football team. They had a poetry team. And I think we had like six students on our team. And um, yeah, like, uh, they brought us all together onto the same, same stage, which I thought was absolutely amazing so you would have you know kids from the south side of Chicago talking about what it's like to grow up in a rough neighborhood you would have you know really wealthy kids from the north side talking about you know not being able to borrow their mom's car right and, and um then you know then you had stories like mine you know about disability that you're not really gonna ever hear um I don't know if you guys know Chance the Rapper, but Chance the Rapper also came up to a very similar uh, program, Louder Than a Bomb, but I'm going to be performing my piece that I wrote for Louder Than a Bomb uh, in high school, and it was my first time ever uh, perform, or, uh, no, <laughs> yeah, first time ever, like, for, oh, first time ever writing about my disability. I ended up winning third place citywide for this poem, and it was, yeah, my first time writing about disability, and I'll, I'll tell the story a little bit of uh, how I wrote this poem after, but uh, I actually got bullied online after writing and performing this poem for the first time, which was very interesting, you know, fuck high school, but uh, I ended up writing a response to that poem, I, I'm not going to do the response, but... Basically, like, he called me a cripple, and I bet my poem was about the word cripple and just taking it back um, and calling it, calling it back. Anyway, that's not this poem. So the, uh, this poem is, is called Living and from high school, and it is <coughs> the first time I ever wrote about my disability. And I thought about opening with this, but it's a little, little abrupt. Ruptured uterus. The worst thing a doctor can tell 
an expecting mother. Disabled. The worst thing the doctor could have called her child, but he did. And as the words leaked from my doctor's lips, hope hammered from my parents' hearts, declaring that I am going nowhere. Because living is impossible, and even with a miracle, I will never walk or talk or tie my own shoes. It was like God grabbed my neck and said, sorry kid, there's no room for you here. But I didn't listen. I held my breath and I prayed, please, I won't give up if you don't give up. And it was science that saved me. It was science that cut my mother open and pulled me out. Science stuck the Science laid me on the table, stuck the tubes where they fit, twisted them around each other, and hooked them into large machines. Make me real. While mother lays in the next room, has seen this before through nurse's eyes, and knows the result, knows that the best case scenario is normally worst case scenario. Insides torn to pieces. Doctors place them back together, making sure they look somewhat like the diagram before continuing to sew this thing back into a woman. While father stands just outside, unsure whether to watch his wife on the silver, silver table being reverse dissected, or his only son with machines breathing for him and pumping blood through his veins. His only son silently screaming because tubes make sound impossible. His only son, smiling, because he knows something his father doesn't. Mom, Dad, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to be laughed at for the rest of my life. I will cry every night for years. I will have eyes constantly following me, mouths asking why, and hands twisting, imitating a contorted shape like mine, trying to understand. I'm going to be applauded for doing simple things. I'm going to be glorified for doing amazing things. I'm going to love with all my heart. I'm going to walk. I'm going to talk. I'm going to tie my own shoes. I'm going to be normal. I'm going to live. So I think uh, one of my favorite things about that poem is uh, the tying my shoes aspect because I have these shoes now that I don't need to tie. They just look like they need to tie, but they're actually Velcro. And so like Nike puts out these shoes. On, uh, I bought like a million pairs, but yeah. I don't have to tie my own shoes. But tying my shoes has always been like a point of contention in my life, you know? Um, I, I, I have a lot, of, a lot of trouble with it, and you know, I still like, if I have things I need tied, like I, I went to Mexico last weekend, wore dress shoes, I still have to ask my best friend to tie my shoes for me, right? Like I can do it, it'll just take a lot longer. But with things like Velcro, like it becomes less of a problem, and you know, there's always there's always some something that uh, can make your life a little bit easier. Uh, are you guys doing okay? Yeah. All right. Um, so I wanted to share the story of how I wrote that poem, and I actually talk about this in. My final poem as well, but it's a story that's really stuck with me. So we came to, um, you know, the first day of poetry team, and we were trying to decide what pieces we would write for the year, you know, for our ultimate performance and in this competition. And to, to kind of suss this out of us, our, our teacher asked us, what do you hate the most about yourself? And it was such a, an interesting question. Like, I answered it third. And I remember the first guy had, like, freckles. He said he hated his freckles. The next girl said she hated her nose. I was like, oh, fuck, what do I say? I'm like, I hate my style. 
And she was like, are you an idiot? <laughs> like, maybe? What about your disability? Like, oh yeah, I guess I also hate that. Um, but it was like, it was the conversation where I first decided I would write that poem. Where I decided I would tell my story. And what, what I found from, from going through that experience was, you know, people need to hear my story. Like, people don't get to, to know what it is to live in a disabled body. And poetry is such a, a beautiful way of expressing that. So I'm really happy with the pieces I chose for today, and I hope, I hope you're all enjoying them. Um, and, and really what I wanted to talk about was that it's all about, like, the opportunities I had. So when I was, you know, in, in high school, my first week of high school, I was probably trying to, like, break into a computer and get admin rights on a computer or something. <laughs> but, you know, my teacher caught me, and I was like, oh, I'm just, I'm trying to fix it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know. And she uh, ended up introducing me to the system admin at my high school. And my system admin asked me to come in and work for her um, before school. So for all four years of high school, I would show up two hours early. I would fix computers, replace RAM, um, replace toner. That was a lot of fun doing the inventory. But it was really like my first exposure to, to working and my first exposure to the hustle and to really technology in general. Um, and it was a very beautiful experience, you know, just these, these two sysadmins at my high school just decided they wanted to start taking on student interns. And, you know, I, I owe a lot of my success to that. Um, and, you know, there, there are still very beautiful people that are in my life and, you know, kind of shows you the power of, of teaching and teachers um, and, and the people that help you along the way. Uh, in high school, I also started working for my computer science teacher. So kind of the same story where, um, you know, I was in a Java class and my teacher saw how passionate I was. As I'm sure we're all very passionate about technology and software and he just took me under his wing and he asked me to write an application for him. And it's this thing called competition judge basically he runs a tattoo festival I, i'll give you guys why i have a lot of tattoos <laughs> he runs a tattoo festival where they have competition so you know you like best black and gray portrait or like best color tattoo and they also have a worst tattoo category that's a good one um but he asked me to write to write software for him to to um to help him keep track of data and scores at this competition. So, you know, the first iteration of it was, I think, in Java, and then I, I added networking to it, so I learned how to make two applications communicate. Then I turned it into a website, so it's like a... Uh, I can't say that. Yes, it is, Y-I-I. Um, ye application. <laughs> I like how I try to say it anyway. Um, that, uh, you know, just really helped me build up my skill set. And that's ultimately, like, what gave me my credentials um, as I, you know, transitioned into my professional career. And it's all because, like, this really awesome dude that is, you know, so probably one of the greatest teachers in the Chicago public school systems. Like, he runs a, a maker lab out of one of the schools right now that he started that does, like, 3D printing and fabrication, like cutting edge stuff. Um, and you know, he's just always looking to nourish the people around him. So shout out Jeff Sullen, amazing dude, really good tattoos. Uh, he actually has, he dedicated one of each of his legs to his kids. And like they get to pick a tattoo for each leg every few years. Just, you know, that kind of dude. Um, so, you know, part of that, uh, that whole time period ultimately ended and it landed me in college. So I went to University of Illinois at Chicago, um, and you know I I had known the 
the professor, like computer science organizer person, a little bit before through my connections with Jeff Solon. So they were able to make sure I got a you know position there, and I pursued my degree in computer science. I've always known computer science was my dream since, you know, I'm sure as we all, like, wrote our first program and said, oh my god, we could do this. Um, so, I went to UIC, I got a degree in computer science, it was way too much math. Uh, I did, like, six years of calculus, but that's only because I failed it, like, four times. <laughs> True story. Uh... But I also got my degree in gender studies, or I did a minor in gender studies. And, you know, I don't know if you, I, I recently did an interview where I talked about kind of my roots in, in organizing and all that kind of fun stuff on college campuses. So I was a part of like the LGBTQ group um, in college, and I was a part of, you know, the disability group in college. And just all these really beautiful communities that took me in and kind of let me be who I needed to be. The LGBTQ group was amazing, but it, really, it gave me my first exposure to doing a Drupal website. So, you know, at one point they were like, hey, we want to put together a student organization page. Um, I had been playing around with, like, web development at the time, working on this ye application. I love that. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, you know, it was just building up my, my web development skills. So I looked around at different content management systems. You know, I looked at Joomla, all that fun stuff, and ultimately ended up on Google. And um, it somehow gave me enough experience. I think I just built, like, one content type and maybe a theme. And I'm sure, I'm sure it was bad. But I got my first job out of college in Drupal. And uh, I was like, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll do Drupal. Like, I don't want to do it for too long. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll find something a lot better eventually. Um, yeah, we'll see. One day. One day. Um, but yeah, so so in college, I also got the opportunity to, uh, or I was given an internship with a organization called. American Association for People with Disabilities. And they have this summer internship program where they choose, you know, 10 to 20 students with disabilities across the U.S. and get them internships with the federal government. And then they also pay for you to fly out. They house you for the summer. They give you a stipend. And they really guide you through the whole experience of, like, having your first first professional job um so you know it was my first like real work experience and i like the, the organization was amazing you know they, they gave me this opportunity i worked for uh us cis citizenship and immigration services um built like some database for them i'm sure it also sucked but i also got to go to the white house that summer so it was the 20th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. And they were signing like a, an amendment to it to allow uh, like more people with disabilities to get hired in the government. So they, they brought us all to the White House and I got to hang with Obama. It was really cool. It was a cool photo. I look like I'm in the CIA, but <laughs> also like a dork. Um, and then, you know, in terms of my professional career, I just wanted to give a shout out to, to Bounteous. Um, you know, I've been given so much opportunity to come to places like this and be able to, to talk about myself and talk about tech. And, and you know, I, I think that Bounteous has been an amazing part of that because they give me the support I need to... Um, to do these things, but they also give me the support I need to take care of myself. So, I don't know if you guys know this, but being disabled is really fucking hard. <laughs> so, you know, there are times where I just, I need to 
take care of myself and Bounty Earth gives me the space to do that. You know, they give me the space to grow and explore and, and make mistakes, of course. Um, so, you know, I'm very appreciative of my company and happy I could be here. Uh, I also wanted to talk about my Drupal name really quick. So I think that's a great story about who I am as a person. Um, so my, my Drupal name is CRASX. That comes from crash because I used to bike to school every day and I would crash my bike like all the time. My teacher hated this nickname, by the way. Um, but there was one week where I I flipped over the hood of a car. Like, I was going next to a bus, biking. A car turned in front of the bus, and I flipped over the hood. And it, it turned out to be an ER nurse, and it happened, like, right in front of an ER. And she, she was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, like, your hand is broken. I'm like, nah. <laughs> okay, we good, we good. Just a CP. <laughs> but not, you know, not to be deterred, I... I think I broke my bike, like, I got it fixed, and I got back on my bike within a week. I thought, you know, this will never stop me. I'm going to keep doing this. And the day I got back on my bike, I tried to take a different route home, you know, on a street that was less busy. I ended up going down the wrong way on the street, and <laughs> I ran into another car. <laughs> and I put my head through the window. It was great. Yeah, it was great. I was fine. <laughs> I, I always wear a helmet, of course, <laughs> but, you know, nothing was going to stop me from doing that. So I, th I think there was one summer where I crashed probably 20 times. Um, my sister hates it as well. My family hates it, but, you know, you can't tell me not to because I want to do it, so I do. But that's where uh, my name comes from. Uh, and then I wanted to I have I had this really beautiful slide with nothing but text. Um, it says, you can't plan for the unexpected. So, um, I, m my dad made a very beautiful analogy with me this week. Um, I went to Mexico last weekend and I was down there for a wedding and I got robbed at gunpoint. I'm okay. Um, you know, they took my phone, took my wallet, Fortunately, didn't hurt me. I was with my best friend. You know, we're bonded for life now. Not that we weren't before. Um, but I'm okay. But, you know, my dad made this beautiful analogy of, like, you know, you can't prepare for stuff like this. You can, you know, you can prepare to some degree, like, leave, you know, I lost my passport in the room just in case this happened. But, like, you, you know, you can't plan for these kinds of things. Just like you can't plan for being disabled. You can't plan to have a child with a disability. The best that you can do is just move through it. So you can't plan for the unexpected, but you can choose how to respond to it. So, you know, I made a choice this week. Do I back out of this talk, you know, and go take care of myself and, you know, take care of this trauma? Or do I come here, you know, deal with it and, and give myself the space? Um, I need to do it. And, you know, obviously I decided not to come. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, what, what really made it possible was just how I, how I was able to process what happened to me. And, how, and also what I knew that I was coming down here to. Like, I knew that I was coming down to a community of people that love me, that will take care of me and make sure that I am safe. And, like, that is everything. So, you know, thank you to everyone in this room for, for being you and for being a part of this beautiful place because, you know, I feel safe uh, and I feel okay. Uh, so thank you. And, um... You know, the other thing that my therapist said to me, again, therapy is amazing, is that I have to trust that I'm doing what I need to do to take care of myself. You know, I went to yoga this week. 
I'm, I'm here today and you know, I don't necessarily want to be, but I'm taking care of myself in the process. And it's because of therapy that I'm able to be on the stage today instead of at home where I wish I was. <laughs> um, but yeah, so with that, uh, I'm going to close it out with uh, one of my favorite poems. You know, speaking of, of self-care, um, this is probably my favorite poem I've written in the last couple of years. Um, yoga has been a very important part of my life. It's taught me to take care of my body. I've been going to the gym a lot more, you know, taking care of myself on that perspective. And I wrote this piece um, to kind of just acknowledge uh, the beauty that yoga has in my life. But also, I guess just to give myself some love. I don't know. T tell me what you think. Um, <laughs> this is Yoga Matt. When the yoga mat refuses to unfurl, I place a bolster at its head, blocks at my feet. I build a fortress where nobody can see. I close my eyes so that not even I can see. A smile. In high school, my poetry teacher asked us what we hated the most about ourselves, and I said, my smile. Haha, <laughs> you knew that. <laughs> like, when I fall and head over heels, and, I'm, and my mind is running through the 100 ways that I find you beautiful, you can see it in my smile, in my uneven excuse for an expression of joy. One of the most beautiful girls I have ever met told the teacher that she hated her nose, but she, she was sculpted from a perfection impossible of ever holding any type of flaw. She was worthy of feeling beautiful because she was beautiful, and I was not. When the yoga mat refuses to unfurl, I know that this means my body will not listen. I will ask my muscles to stop twitching, beg my breath to go unnoticed, Find my mind, ask my mind to find acceptance. I am not a goddess. No matter how badly I want to be one, I am not water flowing from the mountains. I am not a lotus or a warrior or a downward facing dog. I am a twitching mess of half poses. I am a forward fold that will never touch my toes. I am a breath shifting through foreign spaces that will only leave me starved of error. There are things I hate more about myself than my smile. When the yoga mat refuses to unfurl, I recognize it and I set my intention. I attempt to forgive myself. I am actively forgiving myself. I am letting myself know that I am enough and that my disability has no say in my beauty. That the only thing holding me back from being a goddess is myself. I have learned on this mat that I can be whoever the fuck I need to be. And at that precise moment, I am exactly as I should be. I have learned on this mat that I am the only one who knows what it is to be in this body. And as a result, I am the only one who can truly love it and care for it and forgive it for existing. I have learned on this mat that I am brave and I am beautiful and I deserve to love, <laughs> I deserve to receive as much love as I give and that anyone that doesn't give me love doesn't deserve to be a part of this beauty. When my yoga mat refuses to, <laughs> to unfurl, I smile. I bow deeply to its honesty and I forget it because I know it too will forgive me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, in summary, um, basically, uh, basically uh, opportunities for marginalized communities make a difference. Um, sorry, Florida, but also fuck off. Um, uh, I hope that I bring you love because I feel love and you know the fact that I'm here today is a testament to that so 
genuinely thank you all for being a part of my journey and for being here to experience this. Um, so let's all forgive ourselves, you know? <laughs> I, just, I just broke a cable, like, <laughs> these things happen, you know, they're, they're part of our journeys and the, the quicker we can forgive ourselves, the quicker we can find that beauty in ourselves. And lastly, I just want to say, feel free to ask me anything at happy hour. I'm an open book when it comes to disability and happy to talk about my experience. So thank you all for coming. Uh, I hope you enjoyed all this and uh, yeah.